Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing how to export animations out as GIF files, so point GIF formats. So I have, oops, I have my animation fully ready to go. To start the process I'm going to go to the top menu bar file, drop down to export and pick up my save the web legacy. So what you're looking at in this panel, at the moment we're on a tab called Optimize and here's our GIF. Here's a still image of it. If I drop to the bottom right and press play and watch the GIF run through. I can also have a look at the original. I can have a look at both simultaneously when I start arranging and sorting out colours. Um, on the bottom left, it tells me that I'm looking at a GIF file, my file size, and the amount of seconds it takes to upload at an internet speed of 56.6 kilobytes per second. On the top right, I will find some presets already made for myself. So starting from the bottom up, we've got PNG and JPEGs, which do not hold the algorithm for animation or movement. These are the files you'll use when optimizing images for your website, so still images. And above we have our GIF files. What these GIF files mean, so the number next to the word GIF, which is the format, is the amount of colors that are in this GIF file or preset. And then next to it is dithered or no dither. So a dither is an algorithm that gets put onto our GIFs and helps us, um, or helps allows us to re gain more colors. So with a no dither on, which I recommend if you are using just a dual tone or very clean lines like a logo GIF, um, a no dither has no algorithm on it. However, this is a hand drawn illustration that's got loads of um, sort of grainy texture, therefore I would benefit from having a dither on. Just a heads up though, that dither does carry a lot of file size, so um, do pick both and press play and see which works best with your animation. Um, beneath the presets are um, our options, so we can actually create our own preset, our custom presets. So here we've got our file formats, selecting GIF. Then we've got our types of dithers. So without boring you too much, I'll just briefly say how perceptual prioritizes colors that the human eye are um, greatly sensitive to. Selective is very similar to perceptual, but it also preserves web colors. So actually it's probably the better of the four different um, types of dithers. Adaptive picks them custom colors from your animation and it samples them into a little table, which you'll see here. So it can be quite restrictive. And then restrictive is web colors and again as seen on table. So I tend to go for selective. Then beneath we've got the, again, a type of dither. You can now pick no dither if you had that strong, simple, maybe even just like a black and white logo uh, animation. Then there's diffusion, pattern and noise. If I just pop on noise, you might see ever so slight difference where things will look even slightly more grainier. So it's so, so subtle. But what it did do is jump my file size up. If I compare, oh, if I compare like this, my original is not as grainy in that yellow as it is in my GIF. Um, and it's just not needed, at least for me in this project, because I'd like to try and keep the file size as low as possible. Also, what's not needed is at the moment I've got 32 colors. 
Um, so I'm going to drop that down. I think I tried eight one day and that seemed good enough. So let me explain the dither a little bit more. Currently I've got eight colours but I have a dither on. So it will pick up, what the algorithm means, it will pick up the eight colours in my animation and it's going to essentially spread the pixels or vibrate next to one another close enough to start to create the illusion of more colours. So eight seems good enough if I need to double check and I can always look at it against the original. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it means I've brought my file size down dramatically and have a quicker upload speed. If for any reason any of these colours were dramatically different from the original, I could pick up from my colour table and redefine a colour. And if I decided actually that was too much of a, a redefinition, I can double click and I'm offered the original colour back to me. And then beneath our colour table we've got image size in pixel width. So remember anything going to web, um, the quality and the size is defined by the pixel width and height of an um, image or animation. If I wanted to change one um, while retaining the ratio between the height and width, I'll keep that lock in place. If I wanted to change one and not the other, I would unlock it and redefine that. I can also change the size and quality through the percentage. But I recommend going through our image size panel. So that is the Save for Web, sorry, you might be able to hear my cat having a crazy moment in the background. Uh, Save for Web panel. I can also select Preview, which will open up one of my um, web browsers to allow me to see this in action and also have all the information that I have here beneath. So I can similarly do that straight in this panel by selecting the play down here. Now I'm just going to move this along so we can see that down here is save, cancel and done. So to actually save the GIF we're going to pick save. Remember when saving for web you keep everything in lowercase and instead of spaces you have little dashes. Define where you're going to save it, and as for format, if you're just saving for GIFs to pop up on websites, um, just select, select image only. If you're working with the CSS of a website and want to and know how to um, develop those, you might pick up both your HTML and images to enable to enable you to embed this into that. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to select save. And my GIF will be on my desktop. On Macs, if I double click this, I will be given a little rundown of e all those frames in this GIF. So a good tip if you ever wanted to watch or see how someone else's GIF breaks down, you could down save it to your computer and double click it, which opens it in preview like so, which shows you sort of a timeline for it. But if I wanted to watch it play, I just select face bar and it will play like so. Great. I hope you found that useful. Thanks, everyone.